the Ben Coley Podcast. Hey, you're listening to the Ben Coley Podcast. Hope you're doing well. I hope you're keeping well in lockdown. I mean, things are starting to ease a bit now, aren't they? So I hope that you're getting to see a few more people and, you know, getting to enjoy things a little bit more. Now, if you've never listened to my podcast before, essentially what it is, is I chat to you about my favourite unsigned artists, my favourite under the radar artists at the minute. So I'll give you my commentary on the latest music. I'll also feature my favourite song of the week and my favourite album of the week from any artist. It can be a signed artist, it could be a huge artist. So this is essentially a snapshot of the past week or so in music. And if you're like me and you love all sorts of genres, then this is a really good little pit stop, I'd say, where you can kind of touch base with some different sounds and collect some new tunes. And hopefully my main aim is for you to discover your new favourite artist. That's the main thing about it. Little preamble before I start. If you've got any suggestions or questions about future episodes or about any particular episode, please hit me up on my socials, which is at bencoley 97 on Twitter, or you can hit me up on Instagram, underscore Ben Coley, or on my email, thebencoleypodcast at gmail.com. In terms of copyright, all of the artists have been, well, they've all agreed to have their songs featured. On this podcast, they've given me full copyright permission and they are the full copyright holders of all their songs. Also, all of the links for all of the artists you're going to be hearing are down in the description. So you can go and check out their social media, go and download their stuff, go and watch their videos, go and show them some love. That's the most important thing. Another quick thing before I start is I want to point you in the direction of indie central music, the good people over at ICM. So if you want to be at the forefront of discovering new music, then IndieCentralMusic.com is 100% the place to go. I used to I used to write music reviews for Indie Central Music ages ago, and they're such a top group of lads that run Indie Central Music, and it's just a great place to go to to find so many fantastic new artists. Some of the artists that you'll be hearing on my podcast today have featured on ICM. They're amazing at picking up new talent and giving them a platform. So you can unearth the hottest indie and alternative talent around through some insightful reviews, uh, feature interviews that they do, which are amazing. And also they put together some specially curated Spotify playlists. So go and follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter by searching Indie Central Music, or of course, go and check out their awesome website, indiecentralmusic.com. Okay, I've got some amazing music. I've been really looking forward to sharing some of these artists. And it just so happens that it's all kind of in the ilk of rock or indie rock today. That's literally just the way it is. I don't ever go into an episode like, oh, I'm going to do this genre today. I'm going to go for hip hop today, or I'm going to go for metal, or I'm going to go for funk. It just kind of unfolds the way it does. And it just so happens that these are three artists that I'm absolutely loving at the moment. But first, let's kick off with an artist called The Lutras. They're an awesome band. On vocals, you've got Ben Clements, lead guitar, Thomas uh, Thomas Gillen. Bass, you've got Danny Heron and drums, Finley Maxwell. They're a rock band from Dumfries in Scotland. They formed in 2016. And the fact that these guys have only been together for four or five years is incredible because that is such huge testament to their sound they're writing they're writing songs and they've got the sound of a band that's been together for like a decade or more in the past uh, in the past couple of months the luchas have sold out headline shows in their hometown a 300 capacity venue in dumfries they've also had performances at edinburgh's liquid rooms where else they played glasgow's king tut's wawa hut which i really want to go to that venue because you get some amazing bands play there. So, I mean, they're definitely one of the most exciting rock bands, I think, coming out of Scotland at the minute. And Scotland, for me, has always been... It's kind of been a holy ground for rock music. If you think of some of the bands that have come out of Scotland, you've got Biffy, Cocteau Twins, of course, Twin Atlantic. They were inspired by Biffy Clyro. Father Son, Primal Scream. That's naming just a few. And then I featured other Scottish rock bands in the past on this podcast like Atlas Run. So the Lutras are just another sick band that have come out from Scotland that are kind of leading the way in indie rock at the minute. So I'm going to get straight into this song. It's called Fight Night, but the Lutras are going to tell you a little bit about it first. Buongiorno, this is Danny from the band The Lutras. Um, You probably will not have heard of us before until I just mentioned it, obviously and after this track so and if you have brilliant 
Uh, this track is called Fight Night. Uh, I think the title speaks for itself, to be honest. Um, it's maybe influenced by my low tolerance level, how it's dropped over the years and seems to be dropping and just wanting to burst um, <laughs> every second on anything and everything, uh, reaching the highest point of my personal thermostat. I'm rambling, I'll get straight to it, I promise. The song is, I think it's a perfect rock and roll number in the sense it's got everything you want in it. It's got a chanting chorus, big drums, um, it's got an arrogant riff, it's got a great bit breakdown and a massive middle eight. Without sounding too vain that is. Yeah, yeah but I just think it's a, a good track for maybe blasting out the car and getting yourself up and ready for the day. Thank you very much. Take care. Awesome. It starts with this kind of real crunchy, sharp guitar uh, riff, I suppose, or chord progression, which sounds amazing. And I love the tone of the guitar as well. It, it sounds it sounds massive. It sounds kind of really bolstered. Also, the drums just keep it moving along really nicely. I love the use of the floor toms. And there's this kind of real engaging, gritty vocals from Ben, the lead vocalist. I think he's got such a such an awesome, commanding voice. And straight away, I'm hearing some. I'm hearing some stereophonics vibes, actually. Early, early stereophonics, I'd say. But I think some of the huge guitars in there remind me of the darkness, but I mean that in the best possible way, because, of course, the darkness have some proper cheesy tunes. These guys don't at all. was the drop down so that was kind of a little short pause for breath and the hooks keep coming in during the lockdown uh during the lockdown wow wow lockdown really during the drop down uh you kind of get some distant woes in there and then you have the lyrics it's fight night but i mean a quick drum feel later and you're back into the chorus again i just think it's a really great song that cuts straight to the point they've kind of trimmed all the fat it's just a really well written well produced well polished rock song So 
So the Lutras, I think, are right in stadium ready rock, full of blistering energy, proper kind of laser focused songwriting. And like I said, they sound like a group of guys that have been together for a long time. And hopefully, when all of this blows over, you'll be able to go and see them live. Another rock artist, this time though, it's uh, a solo artist called Grant Kilpatrick. He's an Edinburgh musician, he's a songwriter, and I love his alt-rock vibe he's got going on. It's kind of, it reminds me of Oasis, I'd say. Kind of got, it's got that, it's harking back to that Brit pop sound, but he's worked with some pretty awesome talent as well. So for this song that I'm gonna feature today called Tension, He's worked with Bruce Rintoul. Now, I didn't know anything about Bruce Rintoul. I can't say I've ever heard of him. I've looked into him. He's produced Twin Atlantic, Father Son. So, I mean, already, Grant Kilpatrick's working with producers who have gone on to produce huge Scottish rock bands. So, I'm sure that Grant Kilpatrick's only going to follow in this kind of suit. So, I'm going to get straight into this song. This is called Tension, and it's massive. Hi, Ben. I hope you're well. It's Grant Kilpatrick here, and I just want to say thank you very much for featuring my track, Tension. So the track was written pretty quickly, which was a blessing. That doesn't happen to me often. Usually it takes me a couple of weeks to get a track fully down with music and lyrics. So that's always great when that happens. And luckily, it was also written a couple of days before going into a recording session. I already had three songs set aside to go and record, and then Tension turned up. And then I replaced one of the songs I was going to record with Tension and put it out as my first single. So I was so happy with how that turned out. In terms of what it's about, lyrically, uh, I went into it with the same idea I always do when I write songs at the moment. And that's not to go in with a certain topic and just see where the song takes me. A lot of the time for me, it's about how the words sound together to put across a feeling or a vibe. But now and again, once a track's written, Sometimes I'm able to extrapolate the meaning afterwards eh, or read into it somehow. And I think in some ways I was maybe trying to talk about this idea of how cooler heads prevail, but who knows, at the end of the day, I'm quite happy for people to make their own mind up about what the track is about. And that goes for any of my songs. So I hope you enjoy the track. Thanks again, Ben, and I'll speak to you all soon. So by now you've kind of got used to this driving guitar that just keeps coming and coming. It's just relentless. It's this cutting bass that I love as well. It's almost quite a trebly bass uh, with this real kind of searing hot crunchy kind of blues driver sound effect on it. And I also love the drum sound as well. It's quite a kind of roomy, authentic drum sound. But what really impresses me listening to this is Grant's voice. I'm sure you'll agree that You've got this huge wall of sound that comes across really well, but you need to have vocals that match that. And I think if the vocals aren't unique, the vocals need to be equally big to live up to that sound. Unfortunately, Grant has a voice that's unique and he's got a voice that's (laughs) absolutely huge. It's kind of, it's this real signature voice actually. So you're going to hear um, verse two now which has a slightly different melody to verse one. It switches up a little bit and it particularly kind of changes halfway through. You're about to hear it. And this is where Grant kind of really opens up with his voice and starts to show off his range with these kind of huge soaring melodies on lines like It's All Right and In Good Time. Also, the chorus is pretty sick as well.
say one of my kind of favourite parts of this song, though, is probably the lead part. And it comes in just kind of after the second chorus. And it's a little bit off kilter. It's kind of wailing away. There's a few dissonant notes in there. And it gives the song kind of this sinister edge to it. But at the end of all this, the chorus returns, kind of resolves nicely, and you got to love a bit of that. Also, I love the symbols that come in at the end as well. It's just relentless. is only the second track released by Grant Kilpatrick and uh, I mean again it's just it's just so much maturity in his writing it's got quite Gallagher-esque melodies and this heaviness that kind of reminds me of like Frank Carter or it's kind of got this punk vibe to it I guess so it's kind of a powerhouse of a tune to be honest and I think you should probably go and download it because it's great for I don't know it's one of those songs you want on like a long car journey or if you just want to blow off some steam in the gym something like that And my final artist I'm going to feature today are super exciting. And it's not just me that's getting excited about these guys. So you're going to hear a band called Bamily. And they actually featured in the NME Top 100 Essential New Artists for 2020. So they're already making a fair bit of noise, it's safe to say. So you've got Tim, Benji, Louie and Charlie. And I really want to see these guys live because apparently whilst they also play a conventional set live you know like with four of them with four instruments playing an an indie set apparently they also do some live DJing and work that into their sets and I'd quite like to see how that would work so I'd definitely like to go and see these guys down towards London where they're from as soon as lockdown lifts but these guys in a nutshell are just summery vibes they're South Summer it's like sun-drenched bliss in every song it's one of those bands i'd say that if you were going to a festival and you were kind of having a bit of a boozy day and it was sunny and you're just wandering around the festival site kind of aimlessly in between sets not really knowing who to go and see you'd walk into a tent these guys would be playing and it would be the band that you kind of fall in love with and you'd be walking away from that weekend like yeah that's probably one of the best sets i saw because it just kind of crept up on me and it was a bit of a surprise These guys draw their influences from kind of places that aren't in the indie genre. They draw their influences from hip-hops and soul, but they kind of deliver it through this euphoric indie lens, I guess. So they're doing enough to kind of tweak the recipe a little bit and make indie music a bit more exciting and keep it kind of on the edge, but there's still that familiarity that makes them pretty accessible. So see what you think of this. This is their track called Katata. Hello, Ben Coley Punk Up Podcast. Thanks for having us. Sorry, I'm a bit sniffly with hay fever. Um, we're going to talk to you about Katata, the song. Benji, would you like to ask the first question? Hi, Louis from Barrelly. Can you tell us first off how the uh, what were the process of writing the song was like? How was it written? So the song started with Timmy, our bass player, coming up with the main riff and he just had it in a logic project on a two bar loop and I think we were like wow that's amazing right yeah am I right it's techno so it was kind of his techno roots coming through yeah and he made it with um, using an arpeggiator 
I don't know if, uh, if that means anything to anyone, with a, just a stock logic Koto sound and sort of brought it to life with his uh, masterful production and yeah I think we heard that and realised we had to write a song and Benj, how did we decide what we were going to write the song about? We decided we were going to write a song about because of the sound, it just sounded like the most euphoric thing in the world so we decided to write it about that thing at a festival when you become best friends with someone for like four days and you know there's, a, there's some other substances involved and you're just there being like I love you so much and then you kind of never see them again so there's this kind of beautiful transientness to the relationship so it's about that it's about those festival friends the ephemeral nature of uh, festival friends which we're definitely missing out on this year um, yeah, truly. God, yeah, catastrophe. Benji, would you say it's our, our best song live or our worst song live? I'd say it was our best song live. Yeah, same. Yeah, it, it goes off live. It is an absolute loose live. Louis sometimes, when he's really feeling like it, plays the catata sound on his keyboard. Yeah, I do. No, it's a really fun one to play live. I think um, we'll be chasing that dragon of trying to come up with a sound like that. For a long time, it's a good, it's a really fun way to write songs. Just starting off with literally one little tiny thing, and then just building a whole world around it. It's great. Yeah, actually, if there's any, if there's any band fans out there, and you've just made a really rogue, wonderful sound, and you don't know what to do with it, send it to us. Send it we'll try over. And make something with it, send and we'll it over. credit you as the guy. Definitely. Here you go. No money, no money. Just, just writing. Big hugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get the money. We'll keep the money. Should we um, disclose the, where the name come from? Yeah, probably. Oh, yeah. Louis, where does the name come from? So we kind of wanted to think about not like inside jokes, but sort of things that only some people would get and the kind of things you might talk about at a festival when you're chatting with someone. It's like, oh, my God, do you know that thing as well? Oh. I um, never thought about that. That's very true. Yeah, so yeah. No, that's where it came from, I think. And then um, we were thinking about funny South Park moments because we like South Park like lots of people. And um, yeah, the Kototo Fish, um, when the class hamster gets lodged up Mr. Slave's bumhole, basically, and goes on this goes on this journey and meets the Kototo Fish. I love as well how they they interviewed each other for that song. Uh, that's the you know what Bambi, you're the first band to do that. You're the first band to interview yourselves. I like that. I think we should start trying to make these artist introductions a bit more creative. Okay, so I love the lead melody that comes in. It's a really I don't know if it's a guitar sample that they've taken from elsewhere. The reason why they why I say that is because they love doing their DJing. Or I'm not just sure if that's kind of a part that they play live. Um, it's just kind of this little like dainty, delicate, descending melody that I love. But then underneath it, you've got these bright, shimmering synths. You've got some pretty punchy drums and you've got a pretty sick bass line as well. And I love the kind of little nuances and details that you hear, particularly in the verses. You've kind of got some beautiful like reverb guitar licks that come in here and there quite distant. And then you hear these chimes come in that kind of... I don't know, sound quite magical and sprinkle a little bit of like glitter here and there on the track, which I like. And the simps as well sound amazing. So I think it's Bamily's kind of 
ear for subtlety. They, they can write huge choruses, as you're about to hear, but it's also their kind of ear for subtlety that I really like. of kind of a band that is going to make us feel good especially at the moment with no festivals on you want you want that band that you can stick on and it's it's going to kind of take you back to better days i suppose so get on bamily they're really cool and katata is uh such a great song that's kind of already shaping up as one of my favorite songs in my playlist at the minute Okay, so my song of the week this week is Leon Bridges. It's a track called Sweeter, and it's featuring Terrace Martin. Uh, and shout out to my very old friend, Jay Kirk, who's out in LA at the minute. And yeah, fair play to him. He's got some production credits on this little beast. And it's Jay, mate. It sounds amazing. So fair play. Whatever, whatever you're doing at Gold Digger Studios in LA, keep it up because it's amazing. But yeah, if you've never heard of Leon Bridges, he's an American Texan uh, soul singer-songwriter. And yeah, this new track of his is incredible. So I first heard Leon Bridges, actually, when I was shopping at um, Urban Outfitters and his track came on. I was like, that's amazing. So I shazammed it and I was like, oh, Leon Bridges, never heard of him before. But it kind of had this real kind of retro vibe to it. But his new stuff is a bit more contemporary. It's kind of this beautiful, soft, uh, soul jazz music. It's got some amazing guitar chords in there uh, and kind of this snappy beat in the background that sounds ace. Um, and also... The reason why I love this song so much, the reason why it's resonated with me, is because it's been released at a pretty difficult time. You've got a lot going on in the world at the moment with the likes of Black Lives Matter, of course. I think it's been the largest civil right movement in the world uh, this year. So, you know, this this song has come out at quite a difficult time to release music, I'd say. It's difficult to capture people's imagination right now with everything going on. But I think Leon Bridges kind of hits the nail on the head with his just incredibly powerful lyrics i'll just leave you with this hoping for a life more sweeter instead i'm just a story repeating why do i fear with skin dark as night can't feel peace with those judging eyes and my album of the week is run the jewels rtj4 this is this is a powerhouse uh i love this so you've got the super duo that is lp and Killer Mike, um, obviously the hip hop beast that has run the jewels. And they've released their fourth album and it's amazing. I can't say that I've ever listened to any of their previous albums in full. I've kind of like dipped in and out, but this is their first body of work that I've really kind of been invested in. And again, my favorite music at the minute is music that's honest, music that is kind of looking at the world around us and pointing the finger of blame and being sincere and kind of being very focused on what's going on and this album is just looking at the absolute kind of toxic nature of the world that we're living in at the minute um it's 
pointing the finger of blame at a flawed political system, corrupt policing, the school system, biased news reporting, and also mobs running riot as well. And in the past, we've had artists that have used their voice for kind of political or social change. If you think of, obviously, Rage Against the Machine is perhaps the biggest example, but Kendrick Lamar, James Brown, there's loads of artists that have gone on to do that. But this Run the Jewels album, I feel like, is following that similar suit. It really feels like this album could start to affect a change. And it's just banger after banger. Every song just goes really hard. I absolutely love it. And as always, Killer Mike and LP as well just have these kind of super detailed verses and the lyrics. There's a lot to there's a lot to unpack. But some of my favourite tracks from this are Walking in the Snow, Yankee and the Brave and out of sight I'd say they're my three favourites at the moment so I'd say if you're a fan of hip hop this is definitely an album for you thank you so much for listening Uh, make sure you go and like make sure you go and leave a review please leave a comment please download my podcast and please share it with any friends of yours who might be into it but I really appreciate you listening and I'll be back next time with episode 16 The Ben Coley Podcast.